The island of Puerto Rico just issued a number of tax incentives that make becoming a real estate investor in Puerto Rico even more lucrative than anywhere else in the world. I used to do deals in Florida, but now is around where our floor is investing in Puerto Rico. And largely that has to do with the tax incentive programs. Here are the tax programs we're using on the island of Puerto Rico, and you can take advantage of them too. In fact, the island is handing out these tax credits like candy, whether you're a foreigner or you're a local real estate investor, it doesn't matter. You qualify for these two acts specifically, and they're a beautiful thing for real estate investors. Let's get into it. When we came to the island of Puerto Rico, we came because we thought that there was opportunity here. There had just been a big storm, Hurricane Maria, and so we had been through that hurricane cycle several times, and we knew that it was a five-year cycle, that after a big storm, there's an initial recovery period, and then there's a rebuild period, and by about five years in, or six years in, you see this massive development that's happening. And guys, it played out just like we thought it would. When we came to the island of Puerto Rico, we saw all of the distress and the mayhem. The power was still out, in fact, when we got here, and that was around Christmas of 2017. So we decided to move to the island and start investing in distressed housing and renovating it up to its highest and best use, which was to either keep it as long-term rentals or to sell it off to people who wanted to live in the houses. There were 250,000 or more houses that were damaged because of the hurricane. When we came to the island, we knew that there was an opportunity, but what we didn't know was that there were tax incentive programs that would make things even more lucrative for us. So about a year in, we started using what was called Act 74 at the time. Act 74 was created with the idea that the island of Puerto Rico wanted to increase the number of hotel units on the island of Puerto Rico. So Act 74 rewarded real estate investors to invest in properties and turn them into hotels, whether that was a guest house, a bed and breakfast, or a full-on hotel. It didn't matter. Act 74 would give you up to a 40% tax credit on your total investment. So that meant all of your purchase, all of your development costs, all of your soft costs, all of your renovation costs. In fact, it even meant the first year operation budget and your first year marketing budget all went into the bucket that you could then get a 40% tax credit on. It works out to about half of your money back on your investment. And there's a whole bunch of other goodies and we'll get into that later on as we go into the video on what those goodies are. Now fast forward six years, Act 74 has been gobbled up by what's called Act 60 and you can still take advantage of investing in hospitality getting these 40% tax credits, and there's a brand new one, Act 182, just passed a few months ago in July, and it's going to allow the same kind of incentives up to a 40% tax credit back on your total investment for long-term housing. Guys, this is amazing for us. We came to the island with the idea that we wanted to invest in long-term housing. We wanted to fix things up and sell them to people. We wanted to fix things up and rent them to people. So now, Act 182 is an attempt, and I think a very good one, to solve the housing housing crisis on the island. Let's go through them one at a time. There's really only two of them that are important to us at this point. It's the Tourism Act through Act 60 and it's Act 182. Let's talk about the Tourism Act, Act 60, what it is, why it's so powerful, and what you get from it. The first thing that I want to say is we're going to get into what these things are. I want to tell you who is eligible for it. I'm eligible for it. My home is in Florida. I have a home in Puerto Rico as well, but my homestead's in Florida, so I go back and forth between the two places and I'm able to invest in this way and get these tax credits. If you live on the island full time, whether you're a local or an expat, it doesn't matter. You're eligible for this as well. So there is no requirement that you move here to take advantage of this portion of Act 60. There are other parts of Act 60 that we're going to leave off of this video that do have those requirements. But just know this, everyone is eligible for this tourism part of Act 60. Anyone can invest this way and get these great benefits. So what are the benefits and what is Act 60 tourism geared toward? What is is the goal of the act and how do you benefit from it? If you can find, as a value-add real estate investor, a distressed property that you can renovate up to at least seven units or more, then you can get these tax credits. So if you renovate a seven-room guest house up to 25 rooms, so seven to 25 rooms is a guest house, then that's one portion of Act 60 tourism where you can get 40% tax credits. If you do more than 25 rooms, then you would call it a hotel or it would be a hotel and you can still get 40% tax credits. 
credits. And if you have a property that's going to be less than that, you can do it as a traditional bed and breakfast. All three of these things are ways that you can invest in the Tourism Act 60 and get 40% tax credits. That's the big one. But what are the other goodies that you get along the way? So the first thing that you need to do when you're going to invest in the tourism portion of Act 60 is identify a property that you're going to renovate for tourism, whether that's going to be a bed and breakfast, a guest house, or a hotel. It doesn't matter. You identify that property and you get it under contract to purchase it. Before you close on that property, so before you buy it, you want to call the tourism company of Puerto Rico, invite them out to your property, and have them come and inspect the property with you so that you can get a pre-endorsement from them. If you get that pre-endorsement from them prior to closing, then your purchase price will be included in the 40% tax credits. If you wait until after you close on the property, you will lose the 40% portion on the purchase price. So this is a big deal. If you're gonna buy something for a couple hundred thousand dollars, up to whatever, if you're gonna buy something for anything, you wanna have the purchase price get 40% tax credit. So there's, there's no reason and no excuse not to do it. All you have to do is call the tourism company, have them come out and look at the property with you. They'll give you an email that says, hey, this is the date that we're going off of and say that's today, and then you're closing tomorrow, you're good. Your purchase price is good for the 40% tax credits. Got it? Good. You need to have it. You got to jump through these hoops. If you don't jump through the hoops and you think, oh, I'm going to do this later, you'll miss out on that portion of the money. Now you've identified the property that you want to buy. You've got it under contract. You've even invited the tourism company out to give you the inspection, to look at it, and to give you that date. We're going to call it a pre-approval date. I'm not sure what they call it, actually, but you want to have, it's super, super important to have that date before you close on it. So you're starting the process and you're jumping through the hoops, guys. It's so important that with anything that you're doing with the government, you follow their rules. If you don't follow their rules, you don't get the benefits. So you've found the property, you've got it under contract, you've had the tourism company out there to do the inspection, you've got your date prior to closing, so your purchase price is going to be eligible for the 40%. What do you do next? You close on the property, of course. And when you do that, you're going to start your pre-application. You'll get what's called a conceptual endorsement. Once you've got this conceptual endorsement, you'll fill out the full application. So these are the steps that you need to take. And guys, the timeline will vary drastically. The faster that you do all of these steps, the faster you get in the queue. That doesn't mean that it's still gonna go fast for you. Nothing goes quickly on the island of Puerto Rico, and this is no different. Expect this to take at the longest portion. When you have an idea that it could take six months to two years or something like that, just expect that it's going to take the longest portion of whatever you're thinking it's going to take because it's probably the way that it is. And that's true of just about everything on the island. Things just don't go fast here, generally speaking. And let's not get bogged down on the timelines anyways. What's important is that you start the process before you buy it and that you're jumping through all of the hoops that you need to jump through ahead of time. We have other content on this and we've even done a master class over on our school platform through Apex. So if you really want to learn about this stuff, come and join us over on school. In fact, we'll put the link for both of our school communities, the Flip Flop Flipper and the Apex community. The Flip Flop Flipper is free. You should all join that after you like and subscribe to the video. The next thing you wanna do is come and network with us and come and learn with us over on the Flip Flop Flipper community on school. And then if you really, really wanna kick it up a notch, join us on the paid community. It's only $97 a month, I think right now. And we have a masterclass that we just shot that will deep dive all things Act 60, especially this tourism stuff, you're gonna love it. Once you close on the property and you've decided the way you're gonna go, whether it's a bed and breakfast, a guest house, or a hotel, you're safe to start your renovations. You're gonna wanna document every single dollar. Keep good records. I can't stress this enough. If you don't keep good records, I promise you, you will not get the 40% tax credits at the end. So you have to document every dollar. You want to use people who are paying taxes. So don't go hiring the Dominican guys and paying them under the table and think that you're saving money and that that's gonna work for you because it just isn't so. If you're going to jump through the hoops and get the tax credits, you've gotta follow the rules of the government and they want you to be providing jobs. Not only that, they want you to be providing good high paying jobs and that's one of the benefits that the island gets. That's why they created the act is so that you, the real estate investor, will create good high paying jobs. So use the right kind of employees, pay people the right way, 
document everything. Document every single dollar that you spend. I can't stress it enough. At the end of your renovation, you're going to go through what's called an AUP. AUP stands for some kind of audit. It's pretty intense. We've done it a couple of times now. We thought that it was going to be easy peasy, and it was not lemon breezy easy peasy. It was a forensic audit. Every single dollar, every single receipt. If you don't have it, they'll throw it out. If you don't have enough of the receipts, they'll just throw your whole application out. It's super important. As real estate investors, we know that getting 40% of your money back, 40% of your total investment on a project, that's amazing. That's like being able to sell the property, make a 40% return, and then still keep the property and keep the cash flow. But there are other great goodies that come along with doing this kind of investing. And so let's go through that really fast. There's four other things that are really good benefits of doing the Tourism Max 60. You should be paying 25 cents on the dollar for your permitting fees. So that's a big deal because on the island, these permits cost a lot of money, but it should cost you 25 cents on the dollar. You should be paying 25 cents on the dollar on your property tax. So that's another big benefit. That means you're saving 75 cents on the dollar for your property tax. The third one, once you're revenue positive, you're going to pay a 4% corporate tax rate. So that's phenomenal, guys. That's a good enough reason to do it if I've ever heard of one, right? Like these can be highly profitable ventures and you only have to pay a 4% corporate tax rate. And that's good for your investors. That's good for you guys who are running the show. It doesn't matter. 4% is way better than living in California and giving away like half of your money to the government. So the island of Puerto Rico is just amazing. And they really are business friendly. They really want you to invest in tourism in this way. They want you to create these jobs. And for doing it, for jumping through these hoops, you get all of these benefits. There's one last one, no sales tax on the things that you would purchase. So you've got your LLC set up, you've bought the property, you're going through the renovation, maybe you're even in business. You don't have to pay the 11.5% sales tax when you're buying things like furniture, when you're buying things like sheets and chairs and, and all of the other things that you need to run a business. You save 11.5 cents on the dollar, 11.5%. That's phenomenal. Guys, that's why you as a real estate investor, as a developer, want to invest in this kind of product. That's why you want to create hotel rooms is because you get to take advantage of all of these goodies that the government gets. What does the government get for incentivizing you to go and invest in hotel rooms? Well, there's a big one. The island of Puerto Rico has traditionally not catered to tourism. So unlike Hawaii or other islands in the Caribbean, most of the GDP of the island of Puerto Rico has absolutely nothing to do with tourism. Why is that important? It's because the island has identified this as a growth area, and they want to see the GDP from tourism go from about 6% up to about 20%. And they'd really like to see it probably go to 25%. But even if it goes from 6 to 20 or 6 to 18, that's a big, big growth for the island. And that would be amazing for people who live on the island, for people who are employed in the tourism industry. So that's one of the things that the island wants to see is they want to see this massive tourism growth. They want to see a whole bunch more hotel rooms here so that they can sleep more people, so that more people can come to the island and spend money, so that their GDP can go up from tourism and there can be more money on the island to go around for the locals and everybody who lives here. The other thing is they want to see you, as you're building these businesses, employ people and pay nice high wages. So we have seen that over the years as we've invested in this way that the people that we're employing, the wages have grown steadily. We've been here for almost seven years now and we've seen the wages grow steadily in all of our hospitality projects. And in fact, across the board in all of the renovations that we've done on the island, I think we've seen wages close to double over the last seven years. This is phenomenal. When people say that wages aren't growing on the island of Puerto Rico, that's definitely not my experience. We've got several businesses that we've started on the island of Puerto Rico. We keep a whole bunch of people working every single day. And what we've seen from the time when we came to the island seven years ago almost to where the wages are now, it's almost a double or maybe in several instances, it's more than a double, more than double the amount. So if they were getting $10 an hour when we first got here, they're now getting $20 an hour. That's freaking amazing. That's big growth in only six and a half, seven years. That's why the island wants to have you investing in this way. So that's Act 60. That was the way that we have looked at value-add real estate deals over the last six years or so. Anytime we've seen a vacant 
distressed building that we thought we could buy at a good price. When you're buying vacant distressed property, you get to buy it at the lowest price because it has no value, it has no income, and we could renovate it up to its highest and best use and turn it into a small hotel or a guest house or a bed and breakfast. We were investing that way. We've invested millions and millions of dollars with that exact game plan in mind, and it's been super successful for us. Now, fast forward in August of 2024, this new legislation became law. It's called Act 182, and it is to incentivize real estate investors, people like you, to invest in long-term housing, whether that's housing where people are going to buy it from you using an FHA loan or a VA loan. It can be condominiums. It can be houses. You have to do it again, seven units or more, or it can be buildings where you renovate them up and instead of turning them into a hotel, you turn it into a, an apartment building. Again, this is a seven units or more, so it mirrors that Act 60, but it's for a completely different use case. For me, it instantly changed how I look at the value add real estate vacant buildings that we're looking at. So when we heard about this law, I got super excited, guys. When I came to the island, our whole thesis was around let's renovate housing. Let's sell houses to people who need houses, people who just lost it from a storm. There's a quarter million housing shortage still on the island of Puerto Rico to this day. So when I heard about this Act 182, I got very excited because this is what I know. This is what I like. This is what I believe helps the most people on the island, creating housing for people to live in for the long term, for the long haul. That's what I think is the best kind of use case that we could do. And they're going to give us 40% tax credits and they're going to basically mirror Act 60 tourism, but for this new use case. So we instantly started looking at the real estate in a completely different way. And we hope to invest in this way for the next few years. And let me talk to you about the differences between Tourism Act 60 and Act 182, because there are definitely some that you need to know about. A couple of things to say when you're going to invest in Act 182, you know that you're going to do it for the long term. So that means that you're not going to do it for Airbnb. That means it excludes being a hotel, right? So it's, it's the opposite of the nightly rental stuff. It's the long term. And for the island of Puerto Rico, they define long term as six months in a day or more. At least that's my understanding. Guys, I'm not an attorney and this is so new. You need to verify this with your attorney or your accountant. Check it out on your own. Make sure that you dot all your I's and cross all your T's just like any other time when you're going to invest in a an act that the government is going to give you tax credits and other benefits, you need to make sure that you follow their rules. So don't just take my word for it. Go out and do your own research. So just like Act 60 Tourism and with Act 182 for long-term housing, seven is the magic number. I'm not sure why they chose seven, but seven is the magic number. And you're going to want to invest in properties where you can create seven units or more. And they could be units that you build ground up in one building, or I believe they could be houses. Like if you found a piece of land and you built seven houses or more, you qualify for this act. Again, this thing is so new that while I'm telling you about it, I don't think that we fully grasp or understand this thing anywhere near as well as we grasp the hospitality portion of Act 60. However, I think I've got a pretty good understanding of it. So just remember, check with your attorneys, make sure that you jump through the hoops the right way. I keep stressing this because it's just so important that just like with Act 60, when you identify your project before you close on it, if you can, you want to invite, I believe in this case, it's DDEC out to your property so that you'd get this endorsement or date that supersedes your purchase so that you know your purchase price will be included in the 40% tax credits. 40% is the big one and it's gonna have most of the other things that uh, the Tourism Act has as well. We'll go through all of that. I'm just stressing at this point that a lot of this stuff is sort of unknown. The things that we do know, there's a map, and you can get that map if you join our school community on the Flip Flop Flipper. We'll post the maps there, and of course it'll be in our Apex community over on school. We are going to invest this way. We are going to invite partnerships this way. We know that this is our preferred way to invest. And we know that we're going to find projects that are going to fit the mold. They're gonna be inside of the map, but this is really important. You can't just go buy something, turn it into a seven unit apartment building and think you're gonna get Act 182 and get all of the benefits. It has to be urban center incentive. So they want you to invest in the urban centers, identify your property, figure out what you're gonna do with it, whether you're gonna build an apartment building, whether you're gonna build condos, whether you're gonna build houses, 
seven units or more, seven is the magic number, invite DDEC out or tell DDEC about your property before you actually purchase it so that you could include the purchase price inside of the Act 182 and, and get the tax credits on that. The other benefits that you're gonna get through Act 182, you're gonna get 4% on that corporate income tax. So if you do it as a long-term rental play, you're gonna pay 4% corporate tax. If you build it as condominiums and you sell seven condos or more, you're going to pay 4% corporate tax on the sale of those properties. This is the way that I understand it, guys. So this is brand new, but that's the way that I understand it. This is massive, this is so huge. And guys, who's this available to? This is available to everybody. And I stress this so often when I'm talking about these acts because there is this perception on the island of Puerto Rico that locals are, are excluded and it's bullshit. it's not the truth. Don't believe those lies, guys. That's something that you've been told about Act 60 in the past and that you may hear about Act 182 in the near future, but it's not true. This act is available for locals as well as for people who are coming into the island from other places. I'm not sure if you get to not pay the tax of 11.5% on sales tax. Like when you're renovating the properties, if you go to the Home Depot, if you get to avoid that 11.5%, but I believe that you're supposed to. I'm just, I think it's unclear and I haven't actually heard that portion of it. So that's a good question for anybody who wants to invest this way to find out. In fact, you can put in the comments if you know, is that something that we can look forward to or not? 25 cents on the dollar on your property tax. That's, to my understanding, it mirrors just like Act 60 tourism. You're going to pay 25 cents on the dollar for property taxes on your development. That's amazing. We believe that you're going to pay 25 cents on the dollar on your permitting fees. So this is amazing. These are great, great benefits. And you're going to be creating housing for people. You're going to be providing housing to an island that has a housing shortage of 250,000 houses for crying out loud. This is a great thing. This is one time in my life, and I don't do this very often, where I'm complimenting the government and I'm saying, hey, good job. I think you did it right this time. I believe that this Act 182 could go a long way to solving the housing shortage on the island of Puerto Rico. You could be a part of that. Come to the island of Puerto Rico and invest in housing, invest in long-term housing, and let's fix this problem. Here's the other thing I know. On the island of Puerto Rico, there is no shortage of distressed buildings that could have seven units or more. And I mean no shortage. They're everywhere. Just come to the island, pick a town, drive around, find the map that you've got to find, and go identify one of these things and invest in it. You can do this. This is low hanging fruit. And this is something that's going to do a hell of a lot of good for the island and the people of Puerto Rico. All right, guys, thanks for watching this and sticking around to the end. I just want to recap it. Jump through all of the hoops that you need to jump through if you're going to invest in this way. Don't miss a step. Do what you're supposed to do. Whenever you're dealing with the government, you've got to dot all the I's, cross all the T's. And in this case, it's going to be super, super important. Whether you're doing Act 60 for tourism or doing Act 182 for long-term housing, it doesn't matter. These two things, they're great for real estate investors. They're great for the island of Puerto Rico. Everyone's available for this. Whether you're a local or an expat, it doesn't matter but everybody needs to jump through the hoops. If you want to continue to be part of the conversation, join us in the Flip Flop Flipper community on school. The link is in the description. It's free. It costs you nothing. It's a great place to come and network with people that are like-minded real estate investors and entrepreneurs. Come and learn with us. Ultimately, guys, maybe we'll even do deals together and we'll see you over there on school. Don't forget to talk to your counsel. Be sure that you know what you're getting into before you get into it. Don't just take my word for it, even though you should watch this next video and like and subscribe to the channel. God bless.